For the part, final part of today's show, let's visit the University of Warwick, which has created a connected campus for its staff and students, complete with autonomous vehicles, smart buildings, and 5G connectivity. In fact, it's one of the first 5G-enabled universities in Europe. Let's take a look. I'm really excited to be here today at our connected campus. We have a vision here, not just to improve the life and experiences of our students and our academics, but to take that research and that innovation out to improve things out there for society. So we're working with BT on immersive technologies and connected autonomous vehicles, which is a super exciting opportunity. So it's the chance to think about how VR and AR can be a game changer, not just in gaming, not just in sort of industry 4.0, but how we might use it in med tech and more broadly across IoT. So um, for me, I think it's an opportunity to really make a difference. Yeah, I mean, I think um, if you consider sort of connected autonomous mobility, in terms of sustainability and carbon change, there's a huge opportunity to use some of these new technologies to be real sort of game changers. Um, and, and I think, you know, 5G offers us the opportunity to actually be able to make that real and in a very, very safe way. But we're really fundamentally aware that we need to make it good for society. So emerging tech is nothing unless it can make a difference for a human. That's the point. And I'm delighted to be joined now by BT's Director for the North and Midlands for Public and uh, Corporate Sector, Sarah Walker, and Chief Innovation Officer at the University of Warwick, David Plum. Thank you very much indeed both for joining us. Uh, David, star of the film, uh, let's, uh, let's start with you. Um, tell me a bit more about what your vision is for this connected campus at the University of Warwick. Yeah, good morning, thank you. I mean, the first thing I'd say is that students are very smart consumers. They've got lots of real-time insights at their fingertips. Um, so our vision for the connected campus is to think really broadly about the future in terms of innovation. So we're creating the Warwick Innovation District, which brings together students, academics, investors with our corporate partners. So we can sort of challenge today's models and apply open innovation. So as you'd expect, this requires, you know, the very best of connectivity and innovation tools. So, you know, I was really excited about the opportunity to work with BT and actually create a real living lab. Mm. Really interesting. Uh, and uh, as we saw in the in the film just there, some really exciting technologies that, that you've been working on together there in Warwick. But just taking a step back from that a moment, what do you see as the broader impact on society and industry of the work that you are, uh, that, that you're doing in Warwick right now? Well, I mean, our missions are to research, educate and innovate for the good of society. So finding new use cases, starting new companies, creating new jobs are absolutely central to our mission. Um, and everything we do is grounded in sustainability and ethical use cases. So, for example, when we're developing new batteries, which are absolutely crucial for pretty much any of the autonomous mobility, from day one, we're thinking, how are we going to collect the batteries back? How are we going to reuse them in a different setting? Um, we recently did a pilot reusing our lithium ion batteries uh, in rickshaws in Bangladesh, which saved them using uh, acid batteries they were throwing away every six months. So creating that from the outset is really important. And thinking about how we bring together all of these different disciplines, because for me, innovation happens at the boundaries where different disciplines, different communities come together and they're bold enough to really experiment. Really interesting stuff and a great story about the lead acid batteries uh, with the rickshaws there. Uh, thank you so much for your responses to our poll here. Uh, we've had 150 responses so far. We're talking about prioritise. To what extent do you prioritise innovation in your business? Uh, we'll come back to that in just a moment, but please do keep your votes coming in and I'll, I'll put the results to our audience. But Sarah, I want to bring in you now. Um, what, what's the role that BT has been playing working alongside David at the University of Warwick to enable this connected campus? 
Yeah, thank you, David, and good morning, everybody. So, I mean, it's hugely exciting to be part of an initiative like this. And if I reflect back to, to some of the, um, the feedback that Fotis shared around the role of 5G, and when we first launched 5G as a, a mobile network capability, we talked about it being a revolution more than an evolution. And what we're working with David and the team on at Warwick is very much showing and demonstrating that, that revolution in action. I think the real interesting thing here is bringing the worlds of academic and applied research together. We talked about bringing that, you know, a, a live lab and actually using network uh, technology and capability to bring some of those opportunities and use cases um, to the fore. And, you know, some of the things that, that David's alluded to in, in that short video, really demonstrating um, the impact of that innovation. But I think what's really, really um, interesting for me is how we're bringing together that common purpose and mission of how you use technology to connect for good. Mm -hmm. So using that power of innovation and technology to enrich the lives of the communities and the industries that we serve and really look at how that can continue to develop and, and enrich people's lives. So 5G being a critical enabler to that is, is really important. But beyond bringing the network, what else is BT bringing to the party when it comes to enabling these uh, amazing projects and amazing connected campuses, for example, like uh, David's working on at Warwick? Well, I think the first important thing is we shouldn't downplay the significance of the network. So all of that great innovation um, is, is effectively a moot point if it isn't underpinned by the latency, the capacity and the speeds that, that 5G enables. And, you know, to have a mobile network infrastructure that's able to underpin that allows us to develop and innovate in a far more flexible and, and agile way. But if we look at BT's role in that, out with the fact that, that we deliver the best UK uh, network capability. The research and development that we do as an organisation, you know, we are one of the leading investors across the UK in research and development. We have exceptional expertise in a number of, of sectors that we can bring to the fore. And the partnership ecosystem that we have across the UK is, is pretty impressive. So you pull all that together and we're effectively like a super aggregator that can bring together all of that expertise, that industry awareness um, and that network capability to a small to medium enterprise up to the largest of our, our corporate and public sector organisations. And the power of that is really, really important. And I think you know, reflecting on, on some of the feedback you've had, a lot of the inertia that we see across the base is, is customers fear that they don't have that expertise in house. They don't recognise the technology as, as we've seen, or it feels like it is quite a challenging step change to make. All we actually need is our customers to understand their own business and to understand their own business challenges. The value in BT then is that we can translate that into a technology roadmap that starts to transform their organisations, improves their business operations, and most importantly, back to David's point as well, actually um, changes the experience for their employees as well as their customers. Thank you, Sarah. Um, let's take a look at the poll results. Uh, again, almost 200 of you responding. Thank you so much. To what extent do you prioritise innovation in your business? The top result, uh, just under half, innovation is critical for our business. It's a key priority for us. And the, even the second one down, focusing on innovation more. Uh, David, they're, they're given your role as Chief Innovation Officer at the University of Warwick, uh, probably very heartening to hear, but not every organisation is going to have the scope to have a Chief Innovation Officer. So what's your advice to organisations to ensure that innovation is throughout the business, even if you don't have a dedicated role? Yeah, I mean, I would firstly start with following the customer. So as customer needs have changed at the moment uh, and this year and, and potentially on an ongoing basis, try and think about customer centered design and actually where your customers are going to be in the future. And what are they going to be demanding from you? Um, I then try and think about some small steps. You know, can you allow um, some of your engineers, some of your marketing people to spend one or two days a month working on projects where we have ring fenced resources to think about the future? And then a bit like Nicola was saying earlier, if, you, if the leaders can model good behavior, if innovation is on the, the, the board agenda, um, if innovation um, is actually something that has some ring fenced resources and it's linked to the future strategy of the company. So getting that linkage between the new customer needs, the employees being involved day to day, the leaders really believing and talking about it, and then the future strategy, that linkage is, 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 is I think the linkage we're looking for, even if you don't have a dedicated innovation team. 
Thank you very much indeed. We've got time for one question from the audience in this section. Um, and uh, it's, it's from Ben. Thank you very much indeed for your question, Ben. And, and it's to both of you, really. Um, there's a lot of curiosity ar around 5G at the moment and about the potential for that. And the question is, which 5G technology is Warwick using? So yes, perhaps just expand upon the technology and the role that that is uh, playing uh, in the connected campus. David and, and Sarah, you know, you've both been working on it. David, first of all. Yeah, so I mean, we're, we're very lucky, actually. We, um, we have our own um, spectrum uh, that allows us to have our own secure, non-commercial 5G uh, use cases. And, and we've been using that for a while and testing it at the research level. Um, so we've got a lovely sort of research uh, sandbox space. Then obviously we have the 5G with BT, that's public 5G and the test that we've done with the autonomous pod that you saw in the video, um, it was I think the first time we've seen a number of autonomous vehicles uh, actually over a 5G public network. So we have that as well. And then off the back of that, we're starting to collect the data and think about how that data might give us some new smart services, some new insights um, but actually allow us to think more broadly about the next steps in terms of sustainability uh, and what comes after that. So I think for me, having both the research and the public network working together and then thinking of the data and, and, and how we use that is really the approach. Really interesting stuff. I'm ever so sorry. We are going to have to wrap up now in the interest of time. But Sarah, David, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your insights about this fantastically creative and exciting project at the University of Warwick. Thank you very much.